All right, thanks for uh, checking this video out. This is a whole new video for us. Uh, this is, I, I call this putzing around with a uh, 63 to 67 wiper motor. And we've already done a video on how to test the wiper motor, and it shows you running it in the high speeds, the low speeds. Uh, a good idea for you right now would probably be to make sure you've uploaded the uh, diagnostic file off the website. It's uh, listed under the uh, repair, and haul, uh, repair and install help section. Uh, if you if you uh, go there and then uh, select the uh, uh, in the right box, just type the word wiper. Uh, in the left box, enter your year, and uh, it'll take you right to the page. It, when you open it up, you're going to see a schematic. You're going to see some suggestions and some tests. There's the schematic. It's a simplified schematic, uh, and so it'll help you follow along. But for right now, uh, there are a total of five, there's a total of six wires actually running to the wiper motor. Uh, one will be the ground off the case. Uh, you've got a dark blue and a brown that run to the washer pump. And then you've got the three wire connector, which we've always called the one, two, three connector on the lower part of the motor. And you can see it right there. Uh, the forward terminal is the yellow terminal. Uh, that's a ground. That's your high-speed ground. That would be uh, the one right here. Uh, the center terminal is your power terminal, and the one furthest in is your low-speed terminal. There are a couple other things, and, and hopefully you can see what the motor does in what situation. You can you can tell uh, where the problem is. So uh, basically, the wiper switch. Uh, the wiper switch has. Uh, the yellow wire that runs to it, it has the dark blue wire that runs to it, and it has the blue wire that runs to it. All three of those wires are grounds. The wiper switch has to be grounded. If it's not grounded, the system will fail. Uh, so make sure your wiper switch is grounded. Make sure your wiper motor is grounded. There's a test on the, on the uh, help and repair thing that will show you how to do that. In my case, it's pr in my case with this test motor, it's going to be a, a given that there's a ground on there because we're going to put it there. So we're going to put a ground on the, on the case and we're just going to grab it right here on this little copper lead that runs out of the motor. Uh, you want to make sure that's clean and grounded as well. Uh, now we've run uh, power to the motor here on the brown wire. We've got our high speed wire here and our low speed is blue. I didn't put a terminal on there because I easily just loop it around and hook it in this hole right here. So, uh, when you first turn your wiper motor on, you're going to have low speed. The motor is going to do this, and it's just going to take off in low speed. So, there, there's your low speed. That's both the inner and the outer terminals grounded. Uh, you'll notice that it parked. So, there's your low speed. If you're grounded here with the motor, and you're running like that, and you're in low speed, and you have a problem with your blue wire, I'm going to have to hold the motor because it's going to walk away from us. But if you have a problem with the blue wire, uh, what's going to happen when you disconnect the ground is kind of funny because then you end up in what we call wiper motor run-on. And that's when you don't have a ground or a good connection on the blue wire. And if you think the problem with customers having is the clicking noise. And, you know, I've looked at the schematic. I mean, like I said, there's really not a whole lot to the schematic to... To throw you a curve, uh, there has to be a ground issue to, to have a clicking noise. And the clicking noise that this customer is hearing is basically when you remove the ground from the case. This would be your clicking noise. You don't get it on the blue, you'll get it on the yellow. And that's when he turns the switch on. Now, why is this happening? Well, it's simple. The motor doesn't have a ground. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a new ground over just to the blue. Okay, so your switch, that's your switch. Your switch is uh, grounded. It's grounded out the blue and it's grounded out the yellow. Low speed. And actually, I'm going to burn my, my motor up if I keep messing with it. So don't really want to do that. But anyway, the, the customer's clicking noise is, is right there. And that's the solenoid trying to trying to park and run and it doesn't have a ground you put a ground on it well now we're in run on 
So there we go. And then we're back to ground. So high, low grounded. And then remove and park. So, uh, you know, I'm, but this has to be a ground problem either with the motor or the switch. Uh, my gut's going, kind of going with the motor. Um, I would run an independent ground. If, if you've got just a clicking noise, I would run an independent ground. Uh, gosh, you know, you could do the test uh, with the wires. You could actually do the test in the car. If you, if you remove the wiper switch from the car, uh, you could do the grounding test inside the car to make sure all the wires are, are run properly. You know, uh, uh, pull the connector off the back of the wiper switch uh, and uh, just run some grounds. I mean, you know, just uh, ground out the yellow like I've done here. You know, and this would be at the switch. You know, you're gonna you're gonna grind out the yellow and the blue and see if you get low speed. Uh, then drop the blue, see if you get high speed, and and then uh, just pull the yellow off and see if it parks. And uh, that would be from inside the car. And if if the motor functioned properly there, uh, then anyway, suggestions would be appreciated. And if you have any questions, uh, email me at uh, Wilcox Customer Service at WilcoxCorvette.com.